Welcome to Past People. Please subscribe to support these videos. The Death of Prince Albert Victor January 14th, 1892 marked a fateful day within the hallowed halls of Sandringham House, where the heir to the British throne, the eldest son of King Edward VII, succumbed to a merciless epidemic that had ruthlessly swept across Britain. In the solitude of his chambers, he drew his final breath, leaving an entire nation enveloped in a profound state of shock and melancholy. Prince Albert Victor, once hailed as a beacon of promise for the British monarchy, found his dreams of ascending to the throne and claiming the prestigious title of Prince of Wales were dashed to the ground. The reason? His father's continued occupancy of those hallowed positions, an outcome shaped by the enduring reign of his formidable grandmother, Queen Victoria. While Albert Victor lay on his deathbed, vigils were held around him, with his immediate family fervently praying for his recovery. Yet, fate had charted a different course, and at the tender age of 28, the heir to the British throne passed away. Prince Albert Victor's birth had been marked by his premature arrival, occurring two months ahead of schedule at Frogmore House in Windsor. He was the firstborn of the future King Edward VII and his wife, Alexander of Denmark. In homage to Queen Victoria's late husband, he was christened with the name and received the most prestigious education available. Although once considered a potential future king, he grappled with persistent health issues. It is believed that his premature birth may have left a lasting impact on his development. And some royal aides even speculated that he had inherited his mother's hearing impairment. Moreover, he faced intellectual challenges, with certain historians positing that his difficulty concentrating might have stemmed from an absence seizures linked to his premature birth, which in turn led to learning difficulties. Despite receiving a top-tier education, it was deemed subpar by the standards of the time as Prince Albert Victor struggled to keep pace. Consequently, he was separated from his brother, Prince George, who required a different educational approach. Both siblings were later dispatched to a training ship with the Royal Navy for their studies, but it was around this time that Prince Albert Victor contracted the fatal typhoid fever. Although attended to by a royal physician, it was widely suspected that typhoid fever had also claimed the life of his grandfather, the man whom he was named after, Prince Albert. His instructors remained unimpressed with his progress, with one describing him as a chronic and incurable dawdler. Nonetheless, his life was not without scandal. In July 1889, the Met Police unearthed a male brothel that had opened in Cleveland Street in London. During interrogations, the men working there disclosed the identities of their patrons. During that era, homosexuality was prohibited by law, and both clients and those employed at the establishment faced prosecution and lengthy sentences of hard labour. However, Albert Victor's health was not always robust, as a previously mentioned his significantly premature birth was believed to have caused health issues later in life. In the mid-1980s, he was attended to by several royal doctors, and in his correspondence, his illness was referred to as a fever or gout. But many scholars who have studied his life suggest that the prince may have been suffering from a mild form of venereal disease or gonorrhea, a condition he may have contracted earlier. Medical records pertaining to his treatment are unavailable, but treating this ailment would not have been very straightforward and it's known that he was prescribed a medication for it. During the period when plans for his marriage to Mary were devised, he also being considered for the position of viscery of Ireland. However, a deadly pandemic was sweeping through Britain, marked by what was commonly referred to as the Russian flu, which was devastating Europe's population. This outbreak is estimated to have claimed the lives of one million people, with reported cases ranging from 300 million to 900 million. While it was believed to have originated in the Russian Empire, there was no standardised treatment for the flu at the time, leading to the use of various remedies. Some patients even received small doses, a poison, as doctors grappled with the unknown nature of the illness. 
Medical professionals also subscribe to the belief that miasma or foul air could cause and propagate disease. In the midst of this outbreak, Prince Albert Victor contracted the flu. He had attended a shooting party at Sandringham and had complained of feeling cold, indicating that he had caught a mild cold. Nonetheless, he continued with the day's activities and returned home, attempting to warm up. He had dinner with his family before retiring early to bed, feeling unwell. The following day, he participated in the shooting party again, but was clearly unwell. He retired to bed early at half past eight in the evening, and on the subsequent day, he was in good spirits, but bedridden, expressing a desire to attend a dinner party, but remaining in his room. However, his condition deteriorated, prompting the summoning of the best doctors in London to Norfolk. Despite their efforts, he was unable to shake off the illness, and he remained confined to his bed at Sandringham House in Norfolk. At just 27 years old, his illness was initially seen by many in the royal family as something that he could recover from, but sadly, this was not the case. The prince developed pneumonia, and his parents, the Prince and Princess of Wales, along with the siblings Princess Maud, Princess Victoria and his brother George, were summoned to his bedside. His fiancée Mary and her parents, along with three prominent royal doctors and three nurses, were also present. They all fervently prayed for Albert Victor's recovery, with the Prince of Wales priests reciting prayers. However, it became evident that Albert Victor's condition was dire and he would not recover. Although at one point it seemed that only one lung was severely affected, giving doctors some hope, Albert Victor's strength waned. He passed away on the 14th of January 1892, just one week before his 28th birthday, shocking the entire nation. His father conveyed to Queen Victoria, Gladly I would have given my life for this, and Princess Mary described the most heart-wrenching sight of the despairing look on his mother's face during those trying moments. His brother George also expressed his deep affection, saying how profoundly I loved him, and I recall with regret nearly every bit of hard work and every small disagreement we ever had. I long to seek his forgiveness, but alas, it is too late now. Across England, people were astounded, as they believed that the royal family were immune to the prevalent disease. One newspaper reported, The sudden news of the Duke of Clarence's demise reached London between 9 and 10 o'clock yesterday, Thursday morning, causing a widespread sorrow throughout the entire nation. There had been a lingering hope that the Duke would recover, but this hope was abruptly shattered. Profound sympathy is extended to the royal family, for whom nothing but the deepest condolences are offered. A special correspondent at Sandringham initially reported at 8 o'clock on Thursday morning that there had been no unfavourable change in the Duke's condition. However, a later telegram conveyed that the Duke of Clarence had passed away between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning. Although no official announcement was posted at the gates, the porter was instructed to inform inquirers that all was over. The news of his death was conveyed gently to Queen Victoria out of concern that the sudden shock could have significantly distressed her, giving her fragile health at the time. His brother George assumed his place in the line of succession and later ascended to the throne as King George V. This transition illustrated that if Albert Victor had survived, he would have become king. His mother was deeply affected by his passing, preserving his room exactly as it was when he died, essentially turning it into a shrine. A funeral was conducted and he was laid to rest in the Albert Memorial Chapel, located within the Windsor Castle grounds. Throughout his life he has been subject of much speculation, but some even considering him a suspect in the Jack the Ripper case. However, at the young age of 28, Prince Albert Victor's untimely death deeply shocked the nation, and had he lived, he would have assumed the throne as king. Thank you for watching. To show your support, please consider subscribing.